coming up in this week's video, I want to share with you some really cool Lightroom tips and shortcuts that I use all the time when editing and post-processing my images. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi, I'm Paul from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a photographer who's been teaching photography for over 16 years here in Brisbane. I run courses, workshops, and I've also been creating video tutorials just like this one for over eight years. Please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, of course, there are many choices available when it comes to photo editing software. Lightroom is still the choice for most professionals. So in this video, I want to share some tips that I use myself when editing my images so you can edit better, faster and be more creative with your photography using Adobe Lightroom. Now, if you don't have Lightroom but would like to try it for yourself, there is a free trial version available. You'll find a link in the video description down below. So I'm using Lightroom Classic and the best place to start is in the library. So when you first open Lightroom Classic, this is what you're likely to see. The library is where you can view your images, rate your images, add keywords and a lot more. On the left is the navigation panel. Here you can choose what images you view as well as keep images organized by creating folders or collections. Here you will also find buttons for importing images into Lightroom as well as exporting images, maybe for social media or printing. The far right panel includes the histogram, a quick develop option, and here's where you can also add keywords to images and view the metadata. At the top of the screen is the menu bar. In this video, I'm only going to be using the library and develop modules. Along the bottom is the thumbnail scroll bar and here's where you can also add filters should you wish to view particular images based on ratings or labels. And the buttons below the image allow you to change how you view your images. Now I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts, they save time. So the E key is called the loop view. Using this, you can view one image at a time and to skip through the images, you just use the left and right arrows on your keyboard. Now, if you wish to go back to the thumbnail view, also called grid view, then it's the G key. Now, as I'm scrolling through my images, sometimes I like to view them without any distractions. And there's a number of ways you can do this. Now they are easy to miss, but if you look carefully, you will see that for each of the four panels, there is a triangle icon. Using these, you can hide the individual panels so you have more space to display and view your image. The panels will reappear if you hover over the arrow and disappear if you move the pointer away. Just click on the arrow if you wish to lock a panel back in place. Now another great keyboard shortcut is the tab key on your keyboard. Pressing this will get rid of the side panels so you get a large view of your image. If you want the side panels back, you guessed it, just press tab again. Now these shortcuts will save you time but can be easily forgotten. So for you guys, I've created a PDF featuring some of my favorite shortcuts. You can view, download and even print it if you wish. You'll find it on the Photo Genius website. I've put a link below this video but I'll also pop one up here for you as well. Okay, so now let's exit the library and open an image in the develop module. Here's where we can start to process and edit the image to take it to the next level. To open an image in the develop module, just select develop on the menu bar or just press the D key, another handy shortcut. So the first thing you will notice is the panel on the right of the screen. What you see here will depend on which of the five icons you select, the default being edit, but there is also crop, healing, red eye reduction and masking. Now I'm going to select edit and as you can see we now have our histogram and a whole bunch of sliders. These allow us to adjust things like exposure, colors, detail sharpening, denoise, as well as do things like add lens blur and other effects. So I'm going to take you through a basic edit. I'm certainly not going to be using all the available tools. I just want to show you some of the really cool features that you may have missed. 
So let's take a look at the histogram first. This is a graph and visual representation of the tones captured in the image from black through to white. This can clearly be seen when you place the cursor on the histogram. Far left is blacks, then shadows, midtones or exposure is in the middle with highlights and whites on the far right. This triangle is normally greyed out, but because it's white, it does tell me that there are some clipping in the shadows. Place the cursor over the triangle and the blue highlights show me where the image is clipped. These areas currently have no detail, so totally black. Now the histogram can also be viewed on the back of your camera. So if you want to find out more about histograms, I've made a separate video all about it. It goes into much more detail. You'll find a link below. Now I just want to jump into another image to quickly show you how the histogram would look for an image that is overexposed. As you can see the triangle here is white, this indicating I've clipped the highlights and if I place the cursor on the triangle you can clearly see again the overexposed areas this time turning red. Ok, let's go back to the sunrise image. So clearly this image is underexposed and needs a little work. Now Lightroom does have an auto option. If I click here you can see the image has improved and this is all done using AI. I don't personally use this option but I do find it interesting to see what adjustments have been made and it could be a place to begin your edit if you're new to Lightroom. I'm going to reset the image using the button and do the edit myself. Using the exposure slider you can see just how easy it is to brighten the image but the problem here is that exposure is a global adjustment so it affects the whole image. Although the boats are much clearer this is at the cost of the sky becoming very pale and we lose all that lovely fluffy cloud detail. Note how the histogram has moved over to the right. So I think I'm just going to reduce the exposure a touch and I think increasing the shadows is a better option as it won't affect the highlights. Much better. Now another great tip, particularly for landscapes and dramatic skies, is to use a touch of dehaze. This can really make a difference and add some punch to your images. So now I want to compare the edit with the original and of course I've got a tip for this too. There is a button at the bottom left of the screen that gives you a side by side comparison but even easier is to use the keyboard shortcut which is the Y key. Press again to return to the edit. Now I don't believe you ever stop learning and the next tip I want to share I actually learned myself just a few days ago in a class on Skillshare. Now Skillshare are the largest online learning community for creatives. They have thousands of classes led by industry pros across photography, filmmaking, illustration, music, crafting and beyond. Now whether you're a beginner, a pro or an everyday enthusiast, there's something for you on Skillshare. A search for Lightroom and as you can see there are heaps of classes taught by real creators such as the excellent Lightroom Masterclass by Nigel Danson. This week I've even been teaching myself some basic guitar skills with a class by Cameron Bruce. So why not join me and thousands of others and start your learning journey today? In fact, the first 500 of my viewers who use the link in the video description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So why delay? Start today. So here's a really cool tip that I picked up recently myself when watching a Skillshare class. Here is an unedited image taken on a recent trip to London. Now this was taken with my Nikon Z6 and if we zoom in we can see that there are a few dust spots in the sky but they aren't always easy to see. But if I select the healing tool and then select the visualize spots option as I adjust the slider it becomes very clear that there is more than just a couple of dust spots and my Nikon definitely needs to go in for a sensor clean. Removing dust spots is easy using either the content aware remove or the healing tool. Now to finally wrap up this sunrise image I'm going to scroll down to effects and I'm just going to add a little bit of vignette.
Now vignette is an effect that you can apply to an image to help draw the eye to the center of the frame. I think it's best used carefully and subtly. But check out this image where I've actually used the vignette to lighten the edges of the frame. Now this I think helps to give the impression of an old faded print from the 1920s. I think it works really well but I'd love to know what you think. Oh and here's the original image. So I really hope you've enjoyed this week's video and if you did, please consider giving it a like. Don't forget to check out the free trial offer from Skillshare, link below. And of course, a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Okay, that is about it other than to say thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.